Cowboys lose, man. Cowboys lose in probably the the worst fashion. This is the worst loss of the season. And I said that on Thanksgiving last week, that that was the worst loss of the season. So now you put two back-to-back -back worst losses of the season, and I don't see how... I don't care how much Jerry Jones loves Jason Garrett. I don't see how Garrett keeps his job. I don't see it, man. I, I, I don't. I don't see it. So we got a lot to talk about. Just another pathetic, pathetic showing by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, as a Cowboys fan, I, I'm embarrassed just to even watch this team. It's hard to support this team. Um, I'm going to go over all the stats. I'm going to go over what I saw in this game. And the Cowboys didn't show me much, man. They didn't show me anything at all. And I really did not even want to pick this team. I kind of already knew that I was getting set up for a letdown by these Cowboys. The Bears, they were looking good. Mitchell Trubisky looked really good in the fourth quarter in Thanksgiving against Detroit. And yeah, it's Detroit. But this Dallas defense can make Mitchell Trubisky look like freaking John Alway. John Elway, man, I mean, he's running for touchdowns. He's passing for touchdowns. Mitchell Trubisky was on the damn hot seat just two weeks ago. Mitchell Trubisky was playing for his job. Mitchell Trubisky was not expected to get an invitation back onto the roster for the Chicago Bears next season. But the Cowboys, the Cowboys defense, man, they can take care of that real quick. They can get, they're going to get Mitchell Trubisky paid. Mitchell Trubisky is going to get that fifth-year option. Based off this game alone, that's what the Dallas Cowboys defense can do for you, opposing quarterbacks, terrible opposing quarterbacks. I mean, it's just it's it's just embarrassing, man. Uh, I don't see how Jameez Alawale can has a roster spot on this team. I don't see it. That's another thing I want to talk about. Why are certain players still on this team? Why do we have a fullback that we don't use that makes mistakes? that isn't on the same page with our quarterback, Dak Prescott. It, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Other teams in the NFL are looking at this like, that's embarrassing. This team's supposed to be a playoff team? This team's 6-7 and seven now. The Cowboys are damn 6-7. I mean, it's, it's pathetic. It's pathetic, man. I, I'm going to check something out real quick. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, anyway, let's let's talk about the game, man. Um, guys that need to be cut. Sloats, a throat slit, man. See, I can't even talk. This team's got me all twisted up. Look, Maher, Maher, he, he's got to be gone. You know, the Cowboys worked out some kickers uh, this week. And I have no idea why Maher's still kicking for this team. If if Garrett's coaching for his job, what the hell's he doing sticking with the kicker that he knows has lost his confidence? Garrett just, he's lost the pulse of this team. I've tried to defend Garrett over the years. I don't always think that it's all Garrett's fault. I'm not one of these Jason Garrett haters, but Garrett's lost it, man. I haven't seen this since 2010 when the Cowboys lost to the Green Bay Packers. And that ultimately got Wade Phillips fired. And I don't see how Jason Garrett can keep his job. Honestly, I think he should be fired tomorrow. I know you want to let your coach, oh, let him finish out the season, give him a fighting chance. It's pathetic what the Cowboys are holding on to. It's pathetic where the, the Cowboys um, bar has been set. We've set it at an all-time low. Jerry Jones, the biggest problem of them all, he's setting this bar Way too low for the franchise that is the Dallas Cowboys. He freaking fired Jimmy Johnson, a two-time Super Bowl winning coach, back-to-back -back because he didn't get along with them. But you can't fire Jason Garrett, a team with Super Bowl aspirations, a team with talent on the roster, proven. And he's going to get a coach another game. You know, he can't get fired, but you can fire Jimmy Johnson. It just shows you how low... Uh, Jerry Jones has has come like how happy he's become Jerry Jones is like like a, you know He's like that fat chicken man on on the farm like he's fed he, He's not gonna do anything no more. There, there's no fights. He's not gonna wake up on time 
Jerry Jones, man, I'm most disappointed in Jerry Jones. I think you got to fire Garrett. I think that whole defensive coaching, the, the whole defensive side of the ball should be freaking embarrassed for the performance they, they've put out there. I mean, like I said, they made Mitchell Trubisky look like freaking John Alway, beating him with his legs, beating him with his arms. Mitchell Trubisky wasn't even supposed to be the starter, man. He, he was, you know, I mean, they were questioning whether he should continue to be the starter. And, and that's what the Dallas defense does, man. Um, look, the Cowboys were working out kickers. Um, Nick Rose, Austin McGinnis, I think it was. Um, you know, these guys, hey, anybody's better than Maher right now. Maher has lost his confidence. This team has lost its confidence in the coaching staff. I mean, this is a first place team, technically. And they've given up on themselves. What? I mean, is this a first, guys? I mean, is it a first where... A first-placed NFL team has given up. Like, they've just given up. Like, it is what it is, you know? Like, they suck. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It's hard to even to keep going and talk about this team because I feel like I've said it so many times before throughout the year. Um, you can talk about X's. You can talk about O's. You can talk about scheme. You can talk about all that bullshit. The bottom line is this team isn't getting it done. This team can't tackle on defense. That is what makes a good defense good and a bad defense bad. You can blame scheme. Oh, well, they only play cover three. You know what? The Legion of Boom played cover three 90% of the time. But you know what the difference was? Those guys wanted to tackle. This Cowboys team doesn't want to tackle. This Cowboys defense doesn't tackle. You know what got Wade Phillips fired back in 2010? In the press conference when he said, hey, yeah, I was watching some of the game tape, and I realized our guys aren't tackling well. Well, you, what the fuck? You're the head coach, and you're barely figuring it out midway through the season that your team can't tackle? That's what Camp Cupcake, that's how Camp Cupcake got its name. Look, I go to Oxnard. The Cowboys don't practice all that hard. Y you can see it. You know what? Whenever a veteran needs a veteran day, they get the time off, and now you're seeing that poor play come to fruition on Thursday night football or on Sunday. And it's pathetic as a, as a Cowboys fan. I'd rather put out a team that's missing a couple of starters that are nicked up, but I know that the dudes that are in that game are practicing and practicing hard. That's the way it's got to be. And that's the Cowboys have gotten way too far away from that under Jason Garrett. And that's why Jason Garrett's got to go. The defense, Chris Jensen says the defense doesn't know what tackling is. I agree. It, it, they're allergic to tackling. And that's why they're not a good defense. I'm not saying this isn't a talented defense. I see the talent there. They do make their plays. Because in spots, this defense plays well. But they just cannot consistently tackle for four quarters. And that's why this team isn't going to make any noise, even if they should back their way into the playoffs. Um, again, on offense, I don't know. Amari Cooper looks hurt to me. If anything, he's pretty much the only one that I'm going to even think about giving a pass but nobody on this team really deserves a pass. You know, he just, uh, I, I believe he went over 1,000 yards in this game. I mean, look, I, I like Cooper, but he doesn't look the same out there. I think those injuries are taking its toll. Injuries are slowing him down. And you know what? That was the knock on him in Oakland, you know, that, that he gets hurt often. And when he's hurt, he's not quite that same explosive player in that offense. And I think we're kind of seeing that a little bit here uh, in Dallas. Um, let me talk about some of the guys that are really pissing me off on this Cowboys team. I mean, I want to know what, what's pissing you guys off out there because I, I want to know if it's just me. That's, that's the way I look at it. I want to know if it's just me. But number one, what's pissing me off? Jalen Smith. How does Jalen Smith get so hyped, start swiping and, and doing all this crap because he makes one tackle after he's whiffed on about three or four of them on the, the, the few plays that I've seen before that? You know, and then he's on the sideline and the camera's, you know, looking for, for Jalen Smith and Jalen Smith's waving him off like, like he can't deal with it. Like, I can't deal with the camera, you know, get out of here. You know, you, you don't shy away from the swipe when you're down and you're down big. You're getting your ass kicked by Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Trubisky is picking on him. They were picking on Jalen Smith in coverage when they were in the red zone. They threw, what, three straight passes to Jalen Smith? And what did they get out of it? A damn touchdown. So come on, Jalen Smith, pick it up. You got paid? You're playing like crap. 
like crap. You know what? The Cowboys were high on LVE. Uh, the Cowboys, I'm going to show that one. The message was held for review. Uh, but you know what? They suck, man. That, that, I won't go that far, but they suck. Um, yeah, that's true, man. Uh, the Cowboys are that guy with all the muscles who talk a good game. But once you punch them in the face, it's game over. The Bills that did that to them now, and, and so did the Bears. And it's true. Back-to-back -back weeks, that's exactly what happened. The Cowboys remind me of that fighter, Frank Bruno. You remember Frank Bruno? He was a fighter out of England. I mean, big dude. I mean, I mean, he towered over Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was this big. But the moment Tyson hit him, Frank Bruno cracked, man. That's the Dallas Cowboys. The biggest, baddest champion in the world on paper. But once they get cracked in the mouth, they're done, man. I, I have no confidence going forward. I don't want to back into a playoff game and host San Francisco. What are we going to do? Why would I want to buy tickets to a playoff game I mean, as excited as I would be to play uh, one of your all-time rivals in the 49ers and host them in AT&T, I mean, it's, it should be great, but I would have no interest in buying tickets to that game. Why would I want to buy tickets to see my team get their ass spanked by a good team? Because that's what happens when they play a good team. Um, worst team in the NFL, let's be honest. I'm officially done with them. Uh, no longer a fan. Uh, 15 years wasted. I mean, um, yeah, guys, uh, Bob Money, I told your fan base, Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones is messing up your team. Get rid of the old guys and bring in fresh guys. Uh, <laughs> Jed York was all over uh, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Bob Money, you were absolutely right. All the props in the world. I'm on your team now, man. Um, I'm on Team Fire Garrett. Uh, Jerry Jones, I nobody can fire Jerry Jones, but... Jerry Jones is, is the most disappointing person associated with the Dallas Cowboys because he's accepting this. He cried after the press conference last week, after that loss to the Bills. He cries because he even thinks he has to, to keep Jason Garrett and has to fire him and he's conflicted. No. What happened to the Jerry Jones that said when he took over the Cowboys, he said, winning is the name of the game. Winning is what we will do. Winning is what we must do. What happened to that guy? He had the balls to fire Jimmy Johnson, a two-time Super Bowl winning coach, but you can't fire Jason Garrett, a guy that's won two playoff games in 10 years? It's ridiculous. It's pathetic. I'm pissed off. I'm disappointed. Um, yeah, I, I mean, win, lose, or draw. I'm a Cowboys fan, but I'm not excited. I'm not proud of this team. Far from it. And you know what's sad? I mean, the Eagles look just as bad, so we probably will make the playoffs still. I, I, I'm not doubting that, but I'm not, a, I'm not enthusiastic about it. And that's a damn shame because as a fan, you should be enthusiastic. The Niner fans that are in the chat room, aren't you guys excited for your playoff game? No matter, no matter if you, you don't win the division and have to go to Dallas or have to go to Philadelphia, you still have confidence that you're going to kick that team's ass. I mean, that's cool. That's, that's what football's about. It's about that excitement. It's about looking forward to the big game, being proud of your team, win, lose, or draw. And I cannot say that as a Cowboys fan. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's bad. Um, look, Mitchell Trubisky and the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, sorry, Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears offense was ranked 27th in the league. Bottom of the barrel. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel on offense. And like I said, Mitchell Trubisky looked like John Elway. Legs, feet, everything. That's what this Cowboys, that's how bad this Cowboys defense is. For all these guys that wanted Chris Richard to be the coach because he's fiery and he yells and he cusses and he's mean and, you know, he cusses out those referees. What the fuck is his defense doing? Doing, they're embarrassing themselves out there on that field. I don't even think they're hearing him. I don't even think they're listening to him. Whatever message is being sent, I don't think it's working. I, I pretty much know it's not working. Um, you know, you know, Bob Money wants the, the Cowboys in the first round. I don't blame you, man. I mean, you, 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 spend, you get some momentum going into to the divisional round. That's for sure. Because the way the Cowboys are playing, and as talented as I, I still believe that they are, the, the coaching staff, the message, the, the, it's not there. The defense can't tackle a soul, man. The defense is allergic to tackling. That's bad. I mean, I'm 
I hate to say it, man, but I, I'm jealous that you guys have a defense that wants to hit. Because I see these guys, and all they want to do is swipe and when they're down by 14, 21 points, and Jalen Smith is swiping like he did something, like it's something to be proud of. That's that's bullshit. That's that's disappointing. I mean, that's that's all what it is, man. Um, yeah, and it, it really eats at me as a Cowboys fan um, because the defense can make Mitchell Trubisky a baller. Say what you want about Jimmy Garoppolo and how he looks shaky and all this stuff. It doesn't matter. Mitchell Trubisky just kicked your ass. What do you think Garoppolo, Aaron Rodgers, what do you think Drew Brees is going to do to this Cowboys defense should they get in the playoffs? It's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's pathetic. And it's not what I expected going into the season. And that's why it, it, it's head's got to roll. I, I don't see how Maher has a roster spot tomorrow at the end of the day. Um, I don't see how, I don't know why, we have a fullback on the damn squad when we don't use him. I don't know why we even waste a roster spot. I don't know how he's active. Um, you know, I don't know how Garrett has a job. I don't know how any of these defensive coaches have a job. I mean, I guess you just got to coach coach your way through the, se- the rest of this season and limp through the rest of this season. But just shows you how far expectations have fallen, even just since training camp for the Cowboys. Um Yeah, uh, Josh Allen looked great. He looked like a world beater on Thanksgiving. Mitchell Trubisky. Sam Darnold came off a mono. You know how sick you are off a mono? And and he came off a mono and just kicked our ass. That's what the Cowboys defense has done. They make stars out of very mediocre at best quarterbacks. And that's embarrassing. Um, Look, I I agree. You probably would have lost to Miami if, if Fitzmagic was in there. And and look and and you know how what's crazy the Eagles are so bad they did lose to Fitzmagic, and that's the only reason why I'm even talking playoffs a little bit still here, as a Cowboys fan and it's it's just it's sad, um, you know. Garrett man he he's got to go. Uh, I I'm really interested in what Jerry Jones had, and that just shows you the Cowboys organization because I as a fan want to hear what Papa Jerry's going to say. And I don't really give a shit what Jason Garrett's going to say because he's not important. He's done. He's a lame duck coach. Um, That's a great question. Bob Money's got a great question. Who would you hire uh, as a coach? I mean, we talked about Roman from Baltimore. I I, I like Roman. It's just, I don't know. I I think the Cowboys are going to need... To, to real, I guess whoever interviews, I should say, is going to have to really give Jerry Jones, or at least, at least I would if I was on that stuff, I'd want to know how all three phases of the game, how that, that plans to be coached out. Um, let me show this one. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Don't talk about playoffs. <laughs> Where's that clip? Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Are you kidding me? That's, that's, that's how I feel right now too, man. Uh, but coaching, look... I'd love for the Cowboys to, I'm going to go crazy and say, you know, we don't know the status of Bill Belichick. And I know it sounds outlandish. I know it sounds so wishful, but we don't know what we know. We, me and Eric were talking on the podcast uh, a little bit after the podcast, actually. And we were talking about how Bill Belichick, his contract, you know, situation is up in the air. Josh McDaniels, turned down, or didn't turn down, but actually left the Colts after taking the job to come back to New England because you know a promise was put into place that he's the future head coach. He's the head coach in waiting. And you got to believe he's not waiting that long. you got to believe that Belichick probably wants Brady out after next season, and Brady probably wants to play another year. So maybe Belichick's on the market. That would be the perfect scenario, but I'm dreaming there. I know, I know, but that would be great. Um... Eric pitched Jim Harbaugh. I, I don't know. I don't think the personalities would mesh with Jim Harbaugh in Dallas. I don't see that working out even for half a season. So I, I don't know about that one. Um, you know, I, I'd even give Ron Rivera a look. And, and I know Ron Rivera's, you know, his playoff record isn't much different than Jason Garrett. He actually has a worse win-loss record than Jason Garrett. But it's just a new voice. It's just somebody that this team's going to respect, especially on defense. One thing about Ron Rivera, I love the way his teams play defense in Chicago. 
and in San Diego when he was the D coordinator. Um, the pressers, man. Um, yeah, the Cowboys are the only team in the league where the owner gives you the injury reports. Um, I don't know about that if Garrett talked about finding another kicker. I know Garrett was, a, he said in a press conference that he was evaluating kickers. And then Jerry had said that same day, uh, no moves were going to be made. So, yeah, he, he, in some way, shape, or form, he obviously overstepped his head coach. It's over. I mean, Garrett's an afterthought now. Fire him now. What's the point? Um, you know, what's the point? And, you know, the thing is, a lot of people think Bill Belichick would be a, a, um, a long shot for the Cowboys to land. But that's what everybody said when Bill Parcells was the Cowboys coach. I was one of those Cowboys fans that questioned it. Like, this, this can't possibly work out, right? Bill, I mean, I mean, you're talking about Bill Parcells and Jerry Jones. Like, you know, horns are, are going to clash, you know. And, and yet it, it did kind of work out. It did kind of work out. Um, I'm going to look at some of the stats, man, uh, just at this game. Not that they're even important, man. Um, Zeke failed to reach 100 yards. I think now this is the fifth game in the row because I think Zeke hasn't ran for 400 yards the last four games, so this would be the fifth. Again, when you're falling behind, you can't stick with the running game. You can't play your strength. Um, I don't think Dak's worth 40 mil. I don't. I Dak is disappointing. Dak played a bad game again for the second week in a row. Look at let's look at Dak's, and this is why I'm not a stat guy, fan, guys. I don't care about stats. And you know, sometimes people get on me like you're not you're not taking in account the stats. Look at how many touchdowns he threw for. Look how many yards he threw for. I don't care. I watch the game. I watch the game and I see how confident he, how many plays a quarterback makes. Does he inspire the, his teammates? Things like that is what matters. But I'll look at the stats. Um, I'm looking up the stats here for Dak. I mean, and I know they're going to be pretty pretty impressive. Let's see. So Dak Prescott, 27 of 49, 334 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. Um, you know, not doesn't look like a bad game on paper. But you know how many times he missed receivers where the ball was thrown too low or the ball was thrown behind the receiver. I mean, some of these receivers had to make some, some pretty great catches to convert those third downs. Blake Jarwin, I mean, ripped one out of the sky behind him just for the third down. Uh, so Dak's ball placement on those intermediate routes is bad. He's looking like Carson Wentz. He's looking like Carson Wentz. Now, his receivers bailed him out on a few, but... He failed to to make those key throws. And even late in the game when he was um, bringing the team back, you know, he, he was throwing those balls behind Amari Cooper, where if you hit Amari Cooper in stride, that might be six points. That's on Dak. I look at those things. I'm not happy. Stat, stats don't mean shit. They don't. You know, when you're throwing the ball behind and you're making a 15-yard a play, yeah, that's good on paper, but I know that that play could have went for 35 yards. So I'm not happy with that performance. And because of that, I don't see how you can justify asking for $40 million if you're Dak Prescott. You've got a lot of improvements to make. You've got a, you cannot have a team that had playoff aspirations, that had Super Bowl aspirations, ask for 40 mil, and right now you're six and seven. That's ridiculous. I mean, come on. You know, have, show some professional pride. Let's see. You mean to tell me uh, that we start the game with a fucking 15-play drive that ends in seven points, then get an interception in the next possession, and it still wasn't a game? I'm with you. I'm with you. And that's another thing that I've been saying. Uh, I've not been a fan of Chris Richard. Most of Cowboys fans have been fans of Chris Richard. And look, he benched Jordan Lewis for Chidobe Awuzie. Even if you're not a Cowboys fan, you probably notice, hey, that number 24 cornerback, like he never turns his head around. He's constantly getting beat. He's always in the pitcher but never making a play. Yeah, that guy's starting over Jordan Lewis. When Jordan Lewis gets interceptions, Jordan Lewis makes plays on the ball. 
I mean, look, he intercepted Mitchell Trubisky. That's the only thing the Cowboys really did all day on defense that kind of even saved them. And yeah, it still wasn't enough. It still wasn't a game. It's over. I agree with you. Um, Bob Money, I I'm with you, man. I, I don't think Philadelphia is going to catch us either. I think one thing about this year's Cowboys, the one thing I can say positive about this Cowboys team is the fact that they own the NFC East. I think they're kind of like kind of like the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC West. You know, they take their lumps against some of the better teams in the AFC outside of their division, but within that division, I mean, they own the Raiders, they own the Chargers. You know, they own the Denver Broncos and that's why that's why Andy Reid is always winning that division and that's kind of what Garrett's doing. I mean, I got to give him that. Got to throw him a bone there. Um but yeah, it, it's it's coaching. It's a mindset. Um, I, we can be up 21 and we're all thinking, please don't mess this up. This year, I agree. This year, I completely agree. You know, um, there's no defending this team anymore. There's no hoping that this team's going to make any noise, not the way it's playing. Um, yeah, it, it's true. Saying you own the NFC East is like saying you, <laughs> you own a clay house. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's like. I mean, in the end, you still get a home playoff game, I guess. You know, I mean, so you can't be too too negative about it. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say, man. I don't have much to say uh, about the Cowboys. I mean, Michael Gallup had some nice stats, uh, 109 yards, 18.2 uh, average. But, again, he had some key drops in that game. So, again, the stats look good. The Cowboys are the number one team in passing yards and, and yards in offense. But they're nowhere near the best offense in this league. We know it. We see it when we're watching them. It, it, there's nothing that's impressive where this team's the number one offense in the league. That's just a bullshit title. That's just a bullshit stat. The Cowboys and number one should not be associated uh, together anywhere. Um, and that's it. That's it. It's just disappointing. It's sad that Mitchell Trubisky kicked our ass today. And, um, you know, I mean, what else do you want me to say? And, you know, I don't even know what to talk about. I, I really am looking forward to hearing what Jerry Jones is going to say. I'm really looking forward to what Jerry Jones is going to do tomorrow. What is he going to do? Whose head is going to roll? I mean, that's what I want to know. I mean, if you guys are in the chat, like, who's not on this team tomorrow? Because I think somebody's head is going to roll. Somebody. Honestly, I think it's probably the kickers. I think it's... I think the kicker, Maher, I think I think he's done. I think there's even a small chance that Garrett's done. I, I really do. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Uh, let's see if Jerry's doing any talking. Oh, yeah. Always around the ball. Yeah. No... Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, man. Um, Dallas, Dallas defense is pathetic. It, it's it's sad, man. It's it's sad. It's disappointing. I had playoff aspirations, and 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 the Cowboys might still make it, but they ain't doing nothing, man. The star, the Cowboys had a down year. I'm talking like it's over, man. So, yeah, guys, that's 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 basically my post game thoughts. Like I said, there's nothing to say. I can't say anything positive about this team. Hopefully, Jerry Jones gets his head out of his ass. Hopefully, Stephen Jones pulls Jerry Jones aside and says, there's moves that we got to make. Uh, there's things that need to be done. And maybe this team can, can do something or at least not look and not embarrass the whole Cowboys nation out there. So, guys, thanks for joining me here on the stream. Sub up to the channel if you haven't. Um, we will go live probably on Wednesday, talk about all things 49ers, talk about all things Cowboys. Uh, bad night in Dallas. Dallas drops another game. Dallas drops to 6-7 and seven, and yet still in first place and gives up on themselves. I mean, they're a conundrum, guys. There's something that I'm going to need. <laughs> I'm going to need a, a few days to wrap my head around, wrap my brain around it, and, and try to give some, some clear thoughts because right now, it hurts, guys. It hurts. But um, I'll catch you guys on the flip side, everybody. Peace out.